Oh, hi there, traders, and welcome again to another Friday edition of Swing Trading Stocks and basically whatever whatever else is on my mind when it comes to swing trading the markets. How are we all doing? Let me just check the, uh, the visuals. We're recording. Excellent. Hello, Randall. Thank you, Glenn. Hello. Hello, Al, Val, Daryl, Dave, Ian, as always, Kevin. It's been a while since I've seen your name, Kevin. Hello, hello. Perry, of course, Randall, Ruben, Vito, all the regulars and one or two new people as well. Awesome. Well, let's jump straight in. So <clears throat> as usual, everyone is just arriving. So the major theme there this week is uh, toss me a ticker. <laughs> it amuses me no end. Uh, but uh, basically, we're just going to uh, take a look at uh, stocks, see if we can find something to trade. If you've got something that you want reviewing, that's the whole idea. Toss me a ticker. Let me know the, the symbol, assuming that it's on the US markets. Uh, that's the data that I have access to. And um, if it's somewhere else in the world or more exotically placed, um, you'll forgive me that I've not got immediate access to uh, those charts. Uh, but if you want to follow up and, uh, you know, just send me an email and I'll chase that up. Anyway, it looks like everyone's logging in. Hello. Uh, who else have we got? We've got Dave, we've got Bruce. One or two more people coming in. Excellent. Quick slow for the coffee. Right, let's jump into it. So um, the lens with which I look through and evaluate the markets is what I lovingly refer to as production line trading. Selfishly, it is for me first and foremost. It keeps me on the straight and narrow. Uh, I had many issues with my own swing trading and day trading and all the other trading that I've done over the years uh, with sticking to a plan. So the whole purpose of this, is it's for my benefit, and it turns out that everyone else gets the benefits from it as well. And all it really is, is an algorithm. It's a set of rules. I like to think about it like a production line, uh, and that really is the lens of what I look through the markets at. So uh, the way that these sessions go, if you are new, uh, we're going to look at the markets primarily. We're going to look uh, mostly at the charts today rather than have any um, main theme so again, throw your ticker in the uh, chat box if you want to have it evaluated. Uh, the way these uh, sessions work, if you want to get absolute maximum value today, I love it when people interact. I love it when you ask questions. I love it when you comment, like, share, and just generally get involved in the session. And um, so, you know, don't hold back to the end. If you've got a question now, uh, let's deal with it and just type it away. Uh, if you would like to hop on the... Um, uh, Mike, again, feel free, raise your hand. Again, we had a few issues with that last week. I wasn't uh, spotting it, uh, or at least not finding a quick way of doing it, but we should be able to just raise your hands. I can turn the mic on. You can ask your question. We can have a little bit of a chat about the markets. So if you are new to these sessions, my name is uh, Phil Newton. I'm a trader first and I'm an idiot second. I like to have a good laugh. I don't take myself seriously, at least I try not to. Um, I just generally like to have some fun. For the last 25 years, or more than 25 years, actually, I've been helping regular folks become traders and get profitable swing trading results. Uh, basically, plugging into that production line training is what I now refer to it as. And from here on out, I'm going to attempt to be your personal swing trading mentor in these sessions, just like I've done for Steve, Anik, Joe, Kyle, Colin, and quite literally thousands of people with my programs over the years to get uh, swing trading results. Uh, I like a good read, a ramble, a coffee. I like strangely flamingos. I don't know what the thing is with them. Everyone's got a thing. That's my quirky little thing. I like traveling around the country, visiting various zoos. Uh, when we can get abroad, that will be uh, going abroad again. And just generally enjoying myself and wildlife. As you can probably gather, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a, a Wall Street guru. I'm just a regular guy. Uh, I figured a few things out. Uh, the sub story version is, um, like most people, I was wanting to do something with the markets. Uh, I was fortunate enough to get into this in the 90s, in my uh, early teens. I started hand-drawing charts. Um, but in the early noughties, 
Uh, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. I had nothing else to do, nowhere else to go. I was made unemployable on what I thought was my deathbed. My then employer came in and said, Oi, sunshine, if you ever get better, you're fired. What a prick. Uh, but that is exactly what he did. <laughs> Not bad. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I had a skill set and it just basically pushed me into, well, what's the worst that could happen? What is the worst that could happen? I'll have to uh, get myself better and go and stack shelves in Asda. Uh, or Walmart or whatever the local equivalent is. But that was my kind of motivation. I've got bills to pay just like everyone else. And that was my situation back in 2001. I maxed out my credit cards, not something I'd advise these days, but you know, when your back's against the wall, it's against the wall. So that's what I did. I went and traded and started to make money. Uh, back then I was day trading, short-term swing trading, uh, one to three days. Um, I turned a thousand dollars into ninety two and a half thousand dollars or pounds, whatever the equivalent is, and um, makes no difference really. Um, in about eight months, and I never looked back. And it was the early stage of what I now call this production line. I like to make it simple, I like to replicate it. That first strategy that I was trading, it was essentially buying the dip. Um, above and below the 100 period moving average on three and seven minute charts. It's not a million miles away from what we do each and every week. Uh, so that's uh, that's me. That's uh, in a nutshell. If you want the um, the official um, laundry list of things, it's there. If you're watching this on the replay, feel free to press pause. I've managed my own hedge funds, coached thousands of students around the world, from banks, retail, traders, all the way through to hedge fund owners, banks, institutions. And the one thing that is universal is I am the type of person that likes to stop tourists to see if they need directions. So I am absolutely obsessed with helping traders become uh, or start to see their own successes in trading. If you're expecting a uh, pitch, uh, some invitation to come work with me, I don't do the hard sell thing. I hate being on the receiving end of it. Um, I do run a business. It is a smart business. You get to tap into the benefits of my uh, tw now 28 years of doing it, and I can hopefully shortcut your successes compared to mine. I spent many years doing it the hard way, um, but you know you will be invited to work with me later. You know it's no secret that I do that. Um, there's no bait and switch involved. All the other bullshit. Again, I hate being on the receiving end. Uh, but you get absolute maximum value from these free open house sessions. Anyway, with that said, let's think about the production line. We're going to once again go and look at lots and lots and lots and lots of stocks. Again, as I mentioned earlier, throw your ticker on the table. Toss me a ticker. And well, what we're going to do is we're going to um, go through lots and lots and lots and lots of stocks. Over the many weeks, I've gone through uh, months now, actually. Um, if we're going to be pedantic, we could say yes. Uh, I'm going to go through the process that we use. So you can see it in action. It's the mechanical scan is what we're looking for. I can do this two ways. I can do this in the watch list. Again, we'll see this in a moment. I'm just kind of explaining what we're going to do today. We're going to spend uh, the rest of the hour doing this. But we've got a mechanical scan. I don't want to flip through chart after chart. <coughs> Excuse me. Oops, sneeze, bless me. <clears throat> My apologies. I don't want to uh, flip through chart after chart uh, like a mindless zombie doing the stock market equivalent of Where's Wally. I just want to tap in to what I believe are the right stocks that are ready to go today or in the next few days. So this is the mechanical scan, and this means that I can just zero in on it. When we're looking at it, we have a, a similar visual confirmation. It should be mechanical, and those two can be interrelated. I'm going to sneeze again, folks. Bear with me. Oh, something's tickling my nose. Oh, you know when you've got a sneeze and it's just on, it's just out of reach. It's just there. It's going to go. As soon as I stop thinking about it, it's going to happen. Is it? No. Oh, my apologies, folks. <laughs> it's just the way it is. Anyway, where were we? It's live. What can I do about it? Um, visual confirmation. What we're going to do is we're going to evaluate, you know, because we've got a mechanical scan, Am I seeing what I'm expecting to see? So I'm trying to overlay uh, what I refer to as my six money making blueprints. Uh, it essentially uses uh, the very basic market structure as a blueprint. If, for example, we are trending up, which we'll look at in a moment, then I'll be looking to buy the dip. And that's one of the things that I refer to as a blueprint. Again, I've got six of those. 
uh, that I like to use. And this means that I don't need to memorize. Again, I used to all at one point I had 34 different chart patterns that I'd like to trade. And that's when I stopped counting them. And um, I probably had about 50 patterns that I'd like to trade different rules, different strategies, different methodologies. It's unnecessary. We can book it a lot of the, the patterns, the Dow to the Gantry, the Yellow Wave Theory, all the other nonsense and shenanigans into these six money-making blueprints. Um, again, I want simplicity uh, in my own trading because I don't want to spend all day doing it. Um, I've got a few calls that I want to do later. The sun is shining after it being horrible rain here in the UK. So I want to go and do something. It's Friday for crying out loud. I want to go and have a long weekend. So I don't want to spend any more time than necessary doing the things that I either need to do so that I can go and do the things that I enjoy doing. This uh, session here today is one of the things that I love doing. And then finally, we've got tradecraft. Um, uh, the entries, the exits, the stops and the targets. I've also got a hedging uh, management system, which allows me to not stress about only having a bullish portfolio in this weird yo-yo uh, up and down market conditions. I'm actually making money on the way down um, on uh, many of my positions, either to mitigate the losses, reduce the risk. And in some cases, I can turn a losing trade, uh, a monetary loss into, well, it's making more money than what I was expecting if my trade idea worked out. So we can turn these trades around with some very simple principles. And again, everything is rule-based, rule-defined so that I can apply it, go in, check, 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 do the list, follow the process, and then go and do something else and sleep like an absolute babe at night. So that's what we're going to do. Let's go and do it. Bam, right. So if you've got a stock that you want to look at, uh, let's, uh, Adrian, thank you very much for your uh, suggestion. Bam, take a look at MRO. I got in a, oops, I got in a few days ago. I'm up 75%. Awesome. Let me just screenshot that. So everyone, if you don't mind me sharing with the group. Let's go back to this. And Randall's got a piece of that too. So there we go. Look at that. Adrian, awesome job. Again, I, just, I always like to celebrate the, uh, again, there we go, Randall. Awesome, 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 fabulous. I always like to celebrate the wins. We want to reinforce positive behavior. This is uh, something that we touched on in, in the, um, the private group, the, uh, the closed group, the mentorship group. That was the word I was looking for. So what we touched on in the week was we want to reinforce positive behavior. And again, it's nice to acknowledge. And hopefully you can also see sometimes I don't say, and I caught myself doing it earlier, it's human nature, I turned the loss into a winner. And then I kind of rephrased uh, and corrected myself because I don't want to ever think negatively about the decisions that I make. And I know this is a really subtle nuance, but this is one of the things that I completely contribute to why I'm almost doing this for 30 years now. It's a lot about how I approach the markets. And one of the phrases that kind of all encompasses it is what I'm trying to do more than anything is be in business tomorrow. So what I'm trying to do is manage my mindset, manage my ability to trade tomorrow and not worry about the outcome of today's trades. And that really is at the crux, the center or uh, the, the part of the, the, the core philosophies of how I approach the trading. The production line is a piece of that uh, puzzle. It's a large piece of it. But from the mindset side of things, you know, hopefully it may, maybe it explains uh, a lot of the, the rules that I have, the viewpoints that I have, certainly the management process that I use, because I don't want to worry about what the markets are doing. One of, the, um, one of the approaches, just before we kind of dip into tickers while everyone's just typing their favorite ticker to evaluate, one of the things that I like to do is I have a portfolio approach. I want to ideally have um, a, a balanced portfolio of bullish trades and a balanced portfolio of bearish trades. Now, those bullish and bearish, you know, it, it's never going to be exactly 50-50, but it might be 60-40 or it might be, you know, um, 60, 40 bullish or 60, 40 bearish, you know, it's going to fluctuate, you know, between the two things, you know, it's going to be a little bit bullish one uh, month, it's going to be a little bit bearish the next month. And that's because the market swings up, the market swings down. And one of the things that I've had not necessarily difficulty with, it's just, 
because of the crash, and you usually see this with or after big sell-offs, it's having that bearish element in the portfolio. So one of the things that I do is I apply hedging strategies to my positions because I've only got um, a, a bullish portfolio at the moment. In the last two weeks, as we commented, that has actually started to shift over to seeing some bearish positions again. I started to comment uh, last week and the week before about, oh, hey, it looks like we've got some bearish trending setups. So that's going to hopefully come back in balance over the next um, you know, couple of months. So I've got that natural, some stock, some positions are bullish, some positions are bearish. So when the market swings up, I'll profit on the way up. And when the market swings down, I'll profit on the way down on the bearish side of my portfolio, because there's always going to be a natural swinging tendency. And this is the basic way, the most absolute basic way is when uh, a trade sets up either bullish or bearish, I've got to take it. Uh, hopefully this also explains why I have a really small universe. Right now, my best stocks are, are quite literally there. I've got a top 50 list. I've got a top 100 list. When I've been really active in the past with my trading, I've had a top 400 list. Again, I've got the luxury of being able to have multiple positions. I'm okay with that. Some people are not okay with it. So maybe you want to think about a top 20 uh, universe of stocks. Maybe you want to think about uh, a top 50 list of stocks. Again, if you're a little bit more uh, adventurous or you want a greater frequency of trades, then you need to uh, you know, have the best stocks in your universe. We spoke a little bit about that fact. We didn't speak a little bit. We spoke at length last week in... The um, not last week, the uh, last week and the week before, actually, last week we did QA. The week before we looked at the personality of a trader, we spent a lot of time talking about we don't want to look at every stock every day all of the time, we want to look at a small group of stocks regularly so that it gives us the frequency, it gives us the consistency, it gives us the ability to profit from the strategy when a trade sets up. There should be no questioning it. It's like, there it is, let's put the trade on. And that gives me the consistency. And again, it's not, again just something else that helps me manage my ability to be in business tomorrow. I'm not running around chasing the markets. I'm quite literally specializing in a group of stocks um, and almost becoming an expert in them. So this is how you can uh, uh, create uh, you know, long-term success for your own trading. Again, it's unnecessary to jump around from stock to stock, from chart to chart, from time frame to time frame, from indicator to indicator. We've all done it. I've certainly done it. It's a bloody frustration. So let's specialize. Let's focus on one tool, one instrument, one pattern, one setup. I'm resisting the urge not to break into Queen's One Vision, but there we go. It's too late. <laughs> uh, well, maybe maybe there's some fried chicken at the end of the uh, the the roll call there of indicators. So where are we at? Uh, so let's take a look at MRO by request. Adrian, awesome job, well done. You can see where I got in this trade. It was. Um, Mistimed. Again, we only get the benefit of hindsight with a mistimed trade. Again, we've got a nice little rally, we've got a retracement. Everyone who's followed me for any length of time can see why we got in this trade right there. I applied a little bit of trade management. I've not marked off the, um, the conclusion of that. But yeah, again, I had to manage the trade. Uh, ultimately, we've got uh, do, 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 looking at it. Oops, my widget has crashed. Bear with me. Where's my widget? Uh, Kevin, I'll come back to your question in a moment. How do we select uh, what stock should be in the universe? We've touched on it in the past, but a good question given that I mentioned it. Uh, price right now is range bound. So we've got two choices, um, multiple crosses, one, two, three, four crosses in the average price. They're all relatively close together, both horizontally and vertically. So we've got to call that a range. And that means that I can just outline the, uh, the crosses in the average price draw a box around it. That's it. Don't worry about drawing trend lines. Just draw a horizontal line on the high, horizontal line on the hoe, on the, on the hoe even, on the low even. Oh dear, is that a Freudian slip? It is now. <laughs> so um, how to get in that? Again, we can be uh, bullish at the range low is what we want. And I'm guessing that's what you've got. Uh, you've got a, a in somewhere around here. Your alternative would be to get in on the breakout of the range. Again, no matter where you got in, there's, there's two good entry opportunities, break of the range, uh, sorry, reverse off the range low, break of the range high. And that's, again, two of the six money-making patterns that we can have. The opposites being uh, bearish at the range high, bearish on the break of the range low. There's four things that you can do. And as we all know and love, buy the dip in an uptrend and sell the rally in a downtrend. 
there are six money making patterns. So whenever I'm looking at the charts, that's what I'm looking for. No, it doesn't have to be complex. That's what we're looking for. So they're great trades. Well done. Uh, and uh, coming back to uh, Kevin's question, Kevin's asking, uh, how do we select uh, what stocks? There we go. How do we select what stocks should be in the universe? So good question. So how do we select uh, what stocks? To create a universe of stocks, the first thing that I'm looking at is uh, volume. So down here, again, it's on the chart, but I'm not usually looking at it on a daily basis. I'm looking to have, like, if you keep in mind, we've got 28,000 stocks on the stock markets. Not all, a lot of them are trash, absolutely just not worth trading. So important question is, how do we make that number smaller so that it's bite-sized, it's manageable. We don't fall into that trap of, oh, is this something that I should trade? Or is this something I should trade? Is the uh, jumping from one to the next, chasing the end of a move, buying highs and missing moves generally? So how do we get that number down? First thing I'm going to do is look at volume. So before I even think about a trading strategy, I'm looking for what I refer to as a liquid stock, at least a million shares traded every day. If you just apply that metric to this number, that's going to drop down to, I think, around 2,000 stocks, at least a million shares trade. So that quite literally gets rid of a lot of the junk. And it's not just stocks, it's ETFs and ETNs, um, you know, kind of mixed into that number. But you're going to bring... Uh, that number down. The simple thing to do is apply that. So if you then go to say uh, 5 million shares traded on average, that'll come down again to about a thousand. And then you start to get into the really liquid stocks. That's the simplest thing that you can do right now is apply that filter to the US markets. The number is going to be a little bit different, depends on the exchange that you're looking at, whether it's Canadian index, European index, uh, the Dow, the CAC, the FTSE. Um, Euro stocks. It's going to be a little bit different. Again, I'm not up to date with different exchanges, so forgive me for not being able to answer that uh, question in the uh, the chats. You need to look at what a typical over under. Again, everyone's got their own number. Some people look for a quarter million. I want a million shares traded. The next thing that I want is options. I I'm going to place my trade with a stock option specifically, and ideally, I want to be able to place my trade with an option as an alternative to trading stock. It's more capital effective, more capital efficient. And I'm going to use the option as if it was stock. I'm going to buy a long dated option and trade it like a stock instead of trading stock. And that means that I can uh, have some more expensive stocks in my portfolio and I'm not locking up my capital. So if they've not got options, then that's going to bring that number down again. And what you'll end up with, just with these two things, you'll end up with about 750 stocks. It's still a big number, as you can appreciate, but it's certainly better than 28,000. You'll have all of the stocks that you could ever possibly want to trade in that. So I would refer to that as my wellspring. So that, that 750 stocks, again, we've not looked at a stock yet. We've just filtered what could be the best stocks. So why a million shares? A million shares is liquidity. If you, uh, I'm sure you, everyone's heard of stories recently. Everyone's heard recently about people getting into a trade or even getting into cryptocurrencies or, or you know, something, a, a trading opportunity, but they can't get out. That's because there's no liquidity. We want a liquid market. And when we have a liquid market, also your cost of business is cheaper. The, the difference between the buy price and the sell price, the bid ask spread gets narrow and narrow and narrow. For example, on Apple, it's a penny wide market. The difference between the buy price and the sell price is a penny. So if the stock doesn't change, it doesn't move. And you for, for an hour, for just for as a random example, if you place a buy order on Apple and go an hour later, you go, you know what? This stock hasn't moved. I can close my trade close my trade. And all it's going to cost me is the spread a penny. And that's the most efficient marketplace that we could have. And that's what having 
millions of shares. I mean, Apple has hundreds of millions of shares traded every single day. You know, it, it's a, a liquid market. And that's what it means. So that's what's important there. The second thing I'm going to do is options. And your follow-up question, Kevin, is how many days out? Uh, my strategy is to, I tend to default to about 100 plus days on the option. And it means that I'm not going to be fall prey to the, um, the t- you're still going to be impacted by the the, um, the, the time decay elements, but you, you're minimizing it. My average time in trade is about 20 to 30 days uh, in an ideal world. Um, so I always want at least two or three times the time that I actually need. And again, generally I default to about 100 plus days. Um, it just means that I don't have to stress over the time decay. The strike is usually my default stock replacement strategy is one strike, the first strike out the money with at least 100 days to expiration. So for that answers your question. Uh, where were we? Um, so yeah, so looking for uh, options, volume. So we want uh, volume, options. And at that point, you're going to have about 750 shares. You can also look for volume on the options. So three uh, option volume. Uh, if you look for about a thousand share, a thousand contracts traded on average, then that's going to bring that universe down to about 300. So you get this smaller and smaller universe. So what you're doing just before you even look at a chart and see, is this a good chart? You've got a good universe. You've got a good liquid marketplace that you can buy and sell options or stock at a reasonable price, whenever the hell you want. You're not going to worry about, can I get in? If the stock crashes, can I get out? There is a marketplace in all market conditions. So that's the important thing. And it's then that you can start applying strategy. Now, I've recently um, cheated in that I've managed to automate a good chunk of what I do. I've just turned my uh, algorithm on. And what I can do is I can quite literally run a back test. So this is MRO, back test. It's got data going back to 1999, just because that's the pre-select that I've got. So MRO since uh, 1st of January, 1999, um, it's got a nice, well, not quite a steady equity curve, but since 2013, so almost 10 years, this has had a wonderfully steady equity curve with the strategy that I like to apply. I can look at the data and go, you know what, this is this looks fairly reasonable. Short trades don't look absolutely ecstatic. So maybe if I just take the short trades out the equation and just focus on the long trades, well, if I put $1,000 in 20 years ago, I would have had $10,000 out. You know, it's, it's not bad, but it gives me confidence to, to place the next trade. So this is the next thing that I do. So I'm going to go through those few hundred stocks and evaluate those stocks based on the system, the strategy, the historical performance and say, should this stock be in my universe? And I actually did that with 2,000 stocks. So I went through 2,000 stocks, applied this strategy. I've got three others that I apply, and uh, I generally trade them all at the same time manually, but separately, I want to create a universe of stocks that performs exceptionally well over 20 plus years. And that's what this list of stocks is. That's that's why I'm looking at these, the, these stocks in my own personal universe. Um, so they've got data, they swing nicely, they generally profit long and short, and that gives me confidence to place the next trade. Will the next trade work out? I don't know. I honestly don't know. No one knows what's going to happen tomorrow. But you know what? I've got the confidence to know that it probably will work out. On average, it should work out. And that's why I trade these stocks. Um, so again, I'm working on um, algorithms uh, four and five. And they're all related to the same things, uh, just because it includes the principles and the methodologies that I teach and the way that I like to trade. So for me, it validates firstly, the strategy, and secondly, the right strategy on the right group of stocks. Um, you know, These are stocks that historically have trended and continue to trend well. So when I apply a trending strategy or a group of trending strategies, because I actually have multiple strategies. So if I apply a group of trending strategies on those best stocks, the top 50, then there's a good chance I should make some money. 
So hopefully that explains kind of the, the next phase. Previously, I used to do it manually. Um, it, as you can appreciate, it takes a little bit of time to do it manually. Um, but I found a good programmer. I've got good software. Um, and this is one of the benefits of getting a premium software. There's plenty of choices out there. TradeStation is a little bit clunky, if I'm going to be honest, but I'm used to it and familiar with it. Um, there's plenty, uh, like Trend Spider, to answer the question, has some back testing uh, solutions. I'm trying to think of the other one. Um, Multi Charts has some back testing. Ninja Trader has some back testing functionality. Training View has some back testing functionality. Um, Trend Spider is built on. Trading view, it's the same software essentially, but they've got a few extra bells and whistles that they've customized. So the, the, the solutions out there, depending on everyone's preference, whether they want something online or Mac friendly or PC friendly, there's lots of choices out there for testing and creating and just uh, generally just validating your trade idea. And um, so that's what you're tapping into. It's the experience and the research. So for me personally, again, just coming back to the point of mentioning that I've got the right stocks, the right strategy, and um, applying the right methodology. Um, and I'm able to trade options. So that opens up a mountain of money management uh, tactics, strategies, and alternative from hedging to locking in profits and some creative strategies. So it just means that I've got freedom of flexibility in the way that I want to trade. At its most basic, my default strategy, as I mentioned earlier, is to have a stock replacement strategy. So for example, uh, you know, to buy here, buy one strike, out the money, and you would profit in the same way that you would if you were trading stock. If it doesn't work out, and um, because it's an option, I can apply some creative money management strategies and still make some money and everyone's fine and dandy. Uh, Microsoft, just picking up on your comment there, Steve. Microsoft has been awesome. Uh, MSFT, press the right ticker. There we go. So Microsoft going well, lovely trending stock. Um, I Again, just in the interest of disclosure, I've got my entry there. I've applied some trade management there, um, meaning I've locked in some profits. Um, you know, it, it carried on going up and up and up and never coming back. It is a great trade. Um, I managed my trade a little bit too early, if I'm going to be honest. Looking for a brand new entry right now. It is dipping in the context of a trend. So let's apply. Let's get back on track. Let's get back on track. So let's apply. Mechanical scan. Steve said, go and look at Microsoft. That's what we're doing. Visual confirmation. Is it one of my money-making blueprints? Let's go and look at it. So now that we're looking at the charts, we can see, and I'm sure everyone is in agreement, it's going up. Do you see what I see? It's going up. It starts at the bottom left. It finishes at the top right. We've got this push higher, retracement, push, big push higher, retracements. And we're now back below the 50 period moving average. So great. So it is trending. Great. Because it's trending, I want to buy the dip. Buy the dip. That's what this means. You can't buy a dip, a, a correction, a retracement, a downward movement without first knowing what the trend is. We've identified it. It is going up. That's a statement of fact. Specifically, since the beginning of the year, it's going up. There's a bloody good chance that's going to continue. My whole philosophy and anyone's philosophy of charting and technical analysis should be until something new happens, the same thing's going to continue. We've got to presume that because that's the very definition of a trend, whether it's going up as a trend, going down as a trend, or as you can just see here on the left, uh, oscillating, range bound. That's also a trend. It's contained within the upper and lower boundary. So those three states are always in play. It's always going to be one of them. And until something new happens, the same thing's got to continue. So we've identified a trend. Great. Now I can buy the dip. I'm going to look at the 50 period moving average and say, there's my line in the sand. If price has gone below the 50 moving average, great. When or if it turns around and goes back above, I will be a buyer on Microsoft. It's nice and simple. That's it. So that is our mechanical scan. So mechanical scan, it's on my list of things to look at, but Steve said, go and look at it. Visual confirmation, is it doing one of the six money-making blueprints? Yes, it's bloody clear and is in an uptrend. Therefore, I am buying the dip in an uptrend. Tradecraft, look for an entry, an exit, a stop, and a target. We've just done it. 
keeping it simple. When or if it goes back above the 50 period moving average. Now, as you can appreciate, I'm just being very quick here. And um, there's a little bit more specificity to this uh, that I teach all my traders, but just in the interest of speed and lack of time here today, I'm being very loose with my interpretation. But broadly speaking, we're waiting for price to retrace below the 50. And when or if it goes back above the 50, that's going to be my line in the sand. I will be bullish and be a buyer at that point. Today's the day. Great. Typically, I look for a retest of the recent highs of first targets. I think we've got a very clear rising channel, which you can see me marking off. So that will give me a target of about $310. Do you, want, do you like the idea of about a $15 move on Microsoft in the next 20 to 30 days? That's what this is telling me. Why 20 to 30 days, Phil? Well, look at the previous times that price has moved. It takes about 20 to 30 days on the rally. Wallop, 20 to 30 days on the rally. Maybe that explains why I managed my trade prematurely. Um, but 20 to 30 days on the rally, 20 to 30 days on the rally. You know, that's pretty cyclical of what we expect. Historically, I also know that my time in trade, which I lovingly <laughs> and suddenly I'm referring to it as tit. So my time in trade, I'm an idiot. I already mentioned that earlier. My time in trade is 20 to 30 days. Uh, so that's my expectation. In 20 to 30 days, I'm looking for a $15 move on Microsoft. Nice and simple. It becomes easier. I'm not saying that this is easy. I've never once tried to convince anyone that what we do is easy, but it becomes easier when you've got structure. A-M. A-M-A-T is next up, Randall. Awesome. So let's start off. Now that we're looking at the charts, well, this is what I might refer to as half and half, Randall. I think you've thrown me an easy one because we've been speaking about this in our private group, but the left half of the chart is in a range. It is a statement. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven crosses in the average price. Can everyone see that they're relatively close together horizontally? They're certainly close together vertically, but we've got multiple crosses in the 20 and the 50 period move on average. I've got to say that price is range bound. So the left half of the chart is trending. However, the right half of the chart is consolidating. So let's just mark a range around horizontal lines. Don't worry about calling it a pattern, a wedge, a flag, uh, this, a that, or the other, uh, half Nelson with a teaspoon cup, uh, a, a cup and um, saucepan. Uh, who fucking cares? It doesn't matter. We'll find out afterwards when someone on social media kindly says, oh, this was a perfect example of X. It doesn't matter. Just recognize the phase. It is consolidating. That is a statement. No one is in disagreement with the way that we view this chart. The average prices are crossed over. If the average pricing, are, and this is the 20 and the 50 period moving average, if the 20 is flip-flopping around the 50, it's not trending. I think we can all agree to that. <laughs> so let's use the trending tool to highlight a ranging condition. Great. I now know that if I wanted to, I can turn the uh, do -do -do, I can turn the move on averages off because they're no use to anyone right this moment, except for telling us that we shouldn't be using them. So let's call it a range, which it is. Mark off the high, mark off the low. That's all I've done. And I've kind of ignored that, if I'm going to be honest, but I can see that prices touched there once, twice, three, four, five times. Multiple touches of the low. Multiple touches of the high. So I'm just containing price. That's where it is contained. So until something new happens, the same thing's got to continue. So I think new would be a breakdown and out. So where is price right now? It's inside the range. Okay, that's going to continue until something new has happened. Is something new happening? No. Great. So I've got to be bullish at the range low, and I'll be looking to trade it up to the range high. We've already had one trade here. You can see the little crosses and the trade management. I've had multiple trades on this uh, over the year, and we've got another one again. Will this work out? I don't know. What I do know is that history repeats itself. So I've got to presume that history will repeat itself, a.k.a. it's in a range. And until something new happens, that will continue. I've got to presume that price is going to go up and down, up and down. Like a, a teeter-totter, as you might say in the States, we call them seesaws in the UK. 
Do, are they a thing? Are they anymore? Is health and safety, have the Karens of the world banned them? The merry-go-rounds, maybe? No, we can't, can't trade, can't play on those anymore. We used to have one called the witch's hat or the finger trap, as we used to call them. <laughs> I don't know why I'm thinking about kids' playgrounds. Um, EA is another example of that, where we can see that consolidation flipping back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It is in a range. You can see I had a bullish trade there. I've had a lovely bearish trade there. I didn't get the bullish trade. It didn't give me an entry as per the rules. I missed out on that move. I was looking at it. It was at the range high, same logic, at the range high, got to be bearish, down to the range low. All of that happened in one day. Must have been a little bit of news. But guess where we are right now? At the range low, you've got to be bullish. I don't like chasing it. I think we're a little bit after uh, some news. But if this came back and did something similar and just rested for one or two days there, like it did there, if it rallies off like it did here and comes back and retests the low, 135, then I would look to be a buyer. So that's what I'm looking for. You can see that kind of like that attempted uh, turnaround there. It goes lower back in, then we can get, uh, get in. So we're looking for something similar. Again, we can always look to history to repeat itself when we're thinking about the specifics of an entry. What did it do last time? Oh, this is how this stock behaves. Great. If that happens, then that's going to give me a little bit of a clue as to when I should place my trade. Uh, we did, Again, I do have rules to uh, follow. That means that it takes out the, the guesswork. We don't want to uh, press the buy and then guess and hope that it works. Uh, this is Apple. Uh, I'm not seeing any tickers if I've uh, missed one. I think I've covered everyone that has posted. If you've got a ticker symbol that you want to review, let me know. But right now, I'm just going to go through my, um, as I refer to them, and I do refer to them uh, as uh, super duper ding dongs. You can see it right there. These are the stocks that are and have, as per the algorithm that I showed you earlier, uh, produce the best results. Super duper ding dongs. Um, I need to work on my naming convention. And again, you can see the last trade that I placed here. I thought just like everyone else, we've got a new high. It's set up my uh, entry. We've got a retracing to the moving average. Uh, some uh, we've got the rally. Uh, a little bit of trade management has been applied. With new information, I've defined this now as a rising channel. Previously, just for reference, which might be explaining the uh, the trade, I had it more as a horizontal range. Uh, again, we've got the multiple crosses in the average price. Uh, but now, again, with new information, we can see that price is going up. I've already in a trade and managed this. Looking for a new trade entry, I'd be looking for price to go back above the 50. And maybe we can get a trade up to the rising channel high for the moment. If it comes down to $135, I will equally be a buyer at the rising channel low. It's in a range. This time, it's angled. Let's check out ADS. ADS. Rally retracements. There's our blueprints. We're at the uh, the 200 period move and average. I've already taken a trade on, waiting for it to kind of produce its goods. Looking up and left, we can see the recent uh, high there. That's where I'm thinking my target is going to be. I'm just waiting for this one to unfold. Uh, BA is a little bit of a mess. Uh, we've got multiple crosses in the uh, average price. It has been on a rising channel. It's transitioning into a descending channel. Um, I'm going to leave this one alone. 50 has crossed over the, uh, the, the the 200. We've been in a bearish mechanical trend. Let's go back to our, our uh, evaluation. So mechanical scan, so mechanical viewpoint, the average price has crossed down. You need to be in a trending state for about 40 days. That trending state is not there. So that's my mechanical evaluation. A little bit of conflict between what price is doing and what uh, the indicators are telling me. So let's leave it alone. Let's not worry about how to trade uh, BA. Let's look for something that says I should be trading. it. So instead of worrying about the how, look for certainty and say, yes, I should be in this trade. So BBWI, um, Bath and Body Works. Previously, this was L Brands. It's had a split. Uh, I think Victoria's Secrets uh, was what they separated from. Both great traders. Everyone can agree it's in an uptrend. Buy the dip. It's come back to the 50 period move on average. It's tried to move higher. It's back below the 50 period move on average. This may transition into a little bit of a sideways range. Again, just looking at history, we can see that price has just paused for uh, three months previously. It did something similar here, about uh, two months there, attempted to rally. So about two to three months. So we've got one and a half here. 
So I'm, all I'm trying to speculate is from a time point of view, when could the consolidation end? So anywhere from two to three months, it could just continue to drift sideways before we see the next leg of that trending move. And that's what we could see here. So I'm just trying to look at the details. It's not going to influence the way that I trade this. It was by the dip. I am already in this trade. And I'm just waiting for it to, uh, to do its thing. But I might have to wait one or two months uh, longer before it finally produces the goods. So again, all I'm doing is looking at the chart and saying, what did it do last time? What did it do last time? That's all we did. That bit of the chart jumps out as being similar to right now. Maybe it's going to do something similar again. We'll never know until afterwards. It's not going to change the way that I place my trade. It just gives me an expectation that I may have to wait if the same thing happens. The same thing happens again. We've always got to presume that. So another uh, benefit of going for those longer dated uh, options is that it means that you know I've got a little bit of luxury of waiting. The other thing as well is, is if you have a trade that sets up and there's a possibility that, you know, this might consolidate a little bit longer, but I don't want to talk myself out the trade because that's the thing that, uh, like, that is always on my mind. Maybe I'll buy an extra three or an extra six months time on my option. So I might influence my uh, strike selection and my expiration selection. I might go one or two strikes out the money. I might buy... Um, uh, you know, an extra six months on the option, which I will do from time to time because of that extra, oh, and I spot this other thing, this extra piece of information that might just influence the trade. It's not going to influence me placing the trade, but it's going to influence how I place the trade. Does that last comment make sense, folks? Just pop a little yes in the chat box. We're either with you or, you know, no, Phil, it doesn't. Please explain. <laughs> just let me know if that landed right for everyone. Awesome, Jack. Thanks very much for your kind words. Oh, Randall, thank you very much. <clears throat> Going to take a moment to grab a drink, folks. My throat a little bit hoarse. How's everyone? Let's just check in. Let's just check in. How's everyone doing? Does this make sense? I mean, when you've got, as we keep saying, when you've got a process, a lens with which to look at the markets, what's it doing? Now we'll look at the charts. What's it doing? Price has been trending. <clears throat> Price has been trending. It is on the left-hand side of the chart going up. However, we've got one, two, three, four, five crosses. 50 is below the 200. There's conflict between what we're looking for. Price is doing one thing. The indicators are saying bearish. Price is saying it's in a consolidation. Let's not worry about trying to trade this one. I don't need to worry about how to trade. Again, there's a difference. How do I trade this chart? I don't fucking care. Let's look for, oh, there's a trade that I should be in. Bam. In a trend, retracement, back to the 200. There's a nice little V-shaped pattern for anyone who's uh, familiar with them. Lovely little reversal. Um, it's reversing off the 200 period moving an average, looking for a tiger up a retest of the recent high. Place the trade. It's already on for me. There we go. So when you've got this, you can easily find, in this case, buy the dip. And it's relative to the blueprints, the, 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 the phase of the markets. So again, just to reinforce, we need to look at enough data, 12 to 15 months. We want to be able to recognize the trend. It's either going up, down, or sideways. If it's going up, buy the dip. If it's going down, sell the rally. If it's in a range, buy range low, sell range highs, break a range highs, break a range lows. There's six patterns that we can trade. So that's all I'm looking for. Domino's Pizza. BTFD, a little bit sideways here, clear uptrend. There's our retracement. I'm not seeing any indication to get in earlier. Let's wait for price to go above the 50 period moving average. When or if it goes back above, I'll be looking to be bullish. Until that happens, let's not worry about it. So it's not no, it's just not today. Uh, why? Uh, so, question from uh, Kevin Why one strike? out the money, why not at the money or in the money? Um, at the money is, at the money doesn't exist. One strike in the money and one strike out the money technically is at the money. The only time you have a, an absolute at the money option is if the strike price is 50, and the stock price is 50, they are both 
at the same price points. And as you can imagine, it doesn't happen that often. So that's an at the money option, first of all. So let's just say that price is $50, right the second, and the next strike is 51, and the next strike down is 49. So this is my current stock price of $50. So let's just say $50 and one cents. So it's above $50 which is more realistic. It's probably going to be $50 and 20 something cents. In fact, let's make it 20. There we go. Problem solved, mischief managed. So if I'm going to be bullish on a stock, on my imaginary stock, I'm going to buy one strike, the first strike out the money, which in this case is going to be $51. The only thing that I'm buying in this case, Kevin, is time. I'm buying the closest strike that I like to buy to the current stock price without being in the money. So again, the only thing that I'm purchasing is time. I'm not buying time plus stock value. So if I was gonna buy the $49 strike, and let's say that I'm bullish again, I'd be buying time plus a dollar and 20 cents of stock value. I'm paying extra for it. There's extrinsic value, sorry, there's intrinsic value in it. So I'm buying uh, out the money. The only thing I'm buying is time. If you buy in the money, you're buying time plus some extra value in the option. Does that make sense? So there's no right or wrong, Kevin. If you want to buy an in the money option, you go for it, babe. You go for it, dude. You go for it. I like to buy one strike out the money. Yeah. So I'm, the only thing I'm buying is time is, is what it comes down to. So the point is, is if I'm wrong and it doesn't go the way that I'm thinking, I've paid the least amount and I can manage my risk effectively. If I'm right, then it starts to accelerate as soon as possible. And that's generally how I think about it. So least amount of costs, most amount of gain is what I'm going for. And, that, and that, that's what I want for my training. Hopefully that makes sense, you know, but that's how I want to approach it. Now, a tr to kind of round off the question that wasn't said, I refer to that as a stock replacement strategy. It's not technically a stock replacement strategy. You could buy uh, deep uh, in the money option. Let's just say that we've got a $50 uh, price point again. A deep in the money option would be 80 delta. 80 delta options. And let's just say that you're buying a $30. It's, it, I'm just exaggerating. $30 strike. You could buy a deep, deep, deep in the money option. Technically, and according to all the textbooks, that you know, 80 delta option is going to be deep in the money. And that is a true uh, stock replacement strategy. It's more cost effective. It's still capital efficient, all the things that we talk about, but you're buying time plus the extra value that's in the option. Uh, and if you're okay with that, that's okay. There's, there's valid strategies. I personally, that doesn't sit well with me. That's why I don't do it. It doesn't suit my personality. So I would rather buy the 51 strike. I would rather buy three or four of those instead of one of these because I can multiply my per trade risk out more effectively. I can manage my trade for the same, let's just say $1,000. I can buy $1,000 and get three or four of those instead of one of these. There's no right or wrong solution here. It's just I believe that I'm managing my trade more effectively in this way. It's the least cost. But then if I'm right, it starts to accelerate as soon as possible. So hopefully that adds a little bit of clarity over what I'm doing and why I like to do it. Uh, which while I'm on that note, um, buying short dated options Um like one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, 45 days. You're going to start to, as a buyer of the options, you are going to be prone to the, um, the Greeks, is how it's referred to. Specifically, you're going to be impacted by theta, the time decay. Absolutely, you can lose money. You can lose money. Um, so one of the benefits of buying either in the money or longer dated options is you start to minimize the impact of, again, the bunny fingers here, Greeks, specifically time decay. It is going to happen. It is a fact. There's ways that you can mitigate it, 
get rid of it, deal with it. It's way beyond our time that we have here today. One of the easiest ways to deal with it on the entry is to buy long dated options. It's not going to get rid of the problem. But if we think about certainly the time decay, if you look at any time decay graphs, they have a shallow time decay, shallow time decay, shallow time decay, shallow time decay. And then about the 45 day level, it starts to speed up. And then about the 20 day level, it starts to speed up. And about the 10 day level, it's almost vertical. So that time decay bullshit that people fall into and they lose money with the short dated options, it's because of theta. This is uh, one of the Greeks, theta. And it can really trip you up. So one of, again, hopefully one of the benefits that you can see is buying long dated options. If I know I'm going to be in a trade for 20 to 30 days, I'm still going to have time decay, but that theta, it's going to be shallow, 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 shallow. I've got my trade. There we go. So I'm still going to experience it, but it's going to be minimized. It's going to be minimized. If you buy the shorter dated option, you're on the clock. I need it to work now. I need it to work now. I need it to work now. I need to, oh shit, I'm losing money. Oh, and then it works. Like we've all been there. I, I've certainly done that. <laughs> and when the markets are absolutely jumping and moving, you can get away with it. You can get away with it. But if it doesn't move, or let's just say that like you miss time, your, let's say you buy here, you miss time your entry. You're going to miss time your entry. That time decay is going to chew up all the um, the premium that's in the option. And let's say that you do get the retest of the high, the thing that I'm normally expecting to happen. That happens. You get two targets. And all it's doing is picking up the, the time decay on the loss. It's really, insert your own expletive, it's really frustrating. So again, hopefully you can start to see like one of the way, again, we're not getting rid of it. We're mitigating it. But we've also got a little bit of a backup plan. If I have to hold on to the trade a little bit longer, I can go another 20 to 30 days. I'm going to have some time decay. But then if the stock does what I was expecting it to do, or it hits some of my trade management triggers, I've got this window that, again, theta is, uh, which is the time decay elements, it's, it's minimized. And I'm not falling prey to the, I really need this trade to do something, anything in the next few days because time decay is speeding up because time decay is non-linear. Um, so hopefully you can see that. Easy thing, easy thing to do is buy more time. Buy more time than you could ever possibly need. The general rule of thumb I use is buy three or four times more time than you think you need. If I need 30 days, I'm going to buy at least 90 days of time. Again, I default to 100 it's usually going to be 90 or 100 or about 120 to 130 days. You're always going to be between two expiration dates. If you're not sure which one, go for more time. I think that's the, the lesson that we can hear. In. Right. Uh, let's go through a few others. I think everyone gets the idea. What have we got? Rising channel, attempted breakout, a little bit of a consolidation, move back into the range, targets the rising high. Again, we all get the principles now of our production line. Uh, average prices has crossed down. We've got a bearish mechanical uh, viewpoint. Prices above the 200. You know what? It's doing something. It's out of, uh, it's in conflict. Let's go and look at something else. Hershey's, buy the dip, baby. Make it easy for yourself. Below the 50, we're now above the 50. Great. I'm going to be bullish on this. I'm going to be bullish on this. It's looking great. Buy the dip. Jeff. Jeffrey's International. Already got a trade on this. We've spoken about this. Average price going up. A little bit of a consolidation in the middle there. We've got entries marked off that we've spoken about in these sessions in the past, and we're running to targets. Yippee, yippee ki -yay. Insert your own expletive. Great trades. Buy the dip. We don't get them all. LNG, I'm not in it. I'm not going to lie to you, folks. Same pattern that we can just see on the previous stock. Uh, trend, a little bit of a, not quite a confirmed consolidation, but officially we can see it. Breakout, pullback, going higher, looking for a new entry, buy the dip. Again, we didn't get LNG. I've got plenty of other stocks in the energy sector, just to explain why I didn't take this one. I didn't want to overexpose myself in the energy sector. I'm participating in it. I don't need to worry about it. Logitech's been a thorn in my side. I'm not going to lie to you folks. It pissed me off quite dramatically. Had a few good trades on this over... Uh, the last 12 to 18 months, we can see my last entry. Now that you know the secrets, uh, this time it's by the dip, this time on the 20 period moving average, break to a new high, retracements. Didn't work out, applied some trade management. It's not necessarily a, a, um, 
uh, a washout, but I've minimized the losses. Uh, we've got a new bearish trade right now. I'll be looking to sell the rally in a downtrend. So this is a transition from a bullish trend to a mechanical bearish trend. It needs to be in that trending state for 40 days or more. And I'll be looking to sell the rally in a downtrend. It's not rallying. It is in a downtrend. So I'm just waiting for things to turn around. At Mac, the return of the Mac. I've had great trades on this. It got caught up in a little bit of the meme nonsense earlier this year. We're officially in a range uh, once, twice, three times consolidating. Um, I've already got a little something on this. Uh, I've managed it uh, more effectively. I've mitigated the uh, the risk on it, so it's not really uh, bothering me too much. New trade opportunities will be if price breaks out and retraces. Uh, of the range. I think the range to trade it from low to high, high to low, it's a little bit too small for my likings. Um, so I'm just going to wait for the breakout on this occasion. Uh, Kevin, no worries. Um, glad you uh, got the answers that you wanted from your questions. Appreciate you might have to pop off uh, right now. I've just noticed the time, actually. It's got away from me again. We've been here an hour, but uh, let's just quickly finish off the uh, the top uh, top 30. Uh, Marriott, Marriott had a trade here. It's been going well. You can probably start to see why I took the trade on. Up the range low. I was actually trying to preempt and be clever and preempt the breakouts. It looked like it was going to be <laughs> work out nicely. It meandered and came back down again. We can see we've got the retest of the high that we just commented on. Um, I, I, I've managed to trade. It's profitable. I can't complain about it. Looking for a new trade entry. I'll be looking for a dip back to 20 or the 50 period moving average. So it's uh, just a waiting game on there. Uh, MT, guess what? We're in a range. Multiple crosses, one, two, three. In a range, we're at the range low. Be looking for a bullish trade from the range low to the range high. Or I can consider a bearish breakout. I love ranges. They give me an each way trading opportunity. NVIDIA, I've posted this out in the community. Great trades on this all year. Buy the breakout, pullback, rally, retracement, rally, retracements. Now you know the secrets. Be looking for a, a retest of the recent high up at $230. I think there might be a bit more in it. We'll see what we see. But NVIDIA looking good. Uh, OSK, average price crossed over, bearish. We're about 10 days into that. Leave it alone. We've got conflict in the mechanical direction. Starbucks. Average price going up. Oh, one, two, three crosses in our average price. Let's draw off the range. We're at the range low. We've got to be bullish at the range low. Trade up to the range high. We also have the choice for a break down and out if price was to sell off. I can consider the bearish breakout because we're at the 200 period moving average just for reference. Uh, for any of my followers, we'll call that a phase one bearish trend. They usually last for about 10 to 15 days. And um, if it breaks down, it gives you a nice little pop to the downside. Uh, S-C-H-N, again, break here, attempted move lower, we're back into the range. So we can call this a false breakout with the benefit of hindsight. We can only say it's a false breakout. So break down and out, we're back into the range. I've already got a bullish trade on, but it just pulls back and retraces a little bit. It stays above that prior range low, which is right here. Then I can use that as a entry for a new trade should I need it. I don't, I've already got one, and trade it from the range low to the range high. This is a pattern that you will not see in any of the textbooks. I had um, uh, Natalie, uh, an old... A friend, one of the few people I actually call mentor. We used to meet up. She lived in London. I lived uh, obviously up, up north in uh, the UK. And uh, we used to meet uh, about halfway. Um, and she's just an ex fund manager at the time, 15, 20 years ago. She was a veteran money manager, uh, money manager, um, hedge fund dude person, dudette. Um, but she explained this on the back of an envelope. You know, it essentially is a breakout where it's a false breakout, it comes back into the range, you get a little pullback, and you just trade it from the range low to the range high. So a lot of professional uh, institutional traders actually uh, look for this pattern. It happens because the institutionals want to be bullish, but the retail traders and smaller traders, I mean, lots of hedge funds are included in the retail trading uh, label uh, because they're smaller. So they'll have a breakout trade below the range, which is what all the textbooks tell you to do. So they'll have a sell order there. Oh, we're bearish. That's what the textbook says. So there's going to be sell, 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 bear, bear, bear. But there's only retail traders, small traders selling. The institutionals are on the other side of that. So they'll drive prices down. And then when the selling pressure dries up, they're still buying. They're going to buy it back up. And this is what drives it back into the range. So this is generally how a false break happens. 
Um, you know, it's it's all they're looking for is liquidity and all those sell orders that happen on the breakout that the the textbooks say to bracket a range. They just want to gobble them up. So those institutional traders, you know, this this potentially the false patterns, the false breaks can be some awesome buying opportunities. So if it just pulls back, goes back above fifty dollars, gives me you know reignited my confidence for the bullish trade and a retest of the recent high. It could be good. I'll find out afterwards whether that's going to come good, but that's how I'm reading the chart right now. Uh, and it's based on the uh, a pattern that I had explained to me in a, a service cafe 22 years ago now, something like that. Trend retracement. This is an ETF, SPGI. Uh, it's the global S&P index, but you've got this rally, got this retracement. We'll be back in bullish territory. I guess what? Back above the 50 period moving average. When you've got structure, it makes it easy to make an evaluation. It's not. No, it's just not today. Uh, this is uh, SQM. I think we can all agree that this is a sloppy, messy, horrible range. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, the attempted trend. One, two, 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 a little bit of conflict. We've got multiple crosses, relatively short space of time. Let's just draw a big square around the whole horrible mess and wait for it to be above or below the range. That's the way I'm going to deal with it. I'm not sure what to do with it. Let's leave it alone. Average price crossed down in a trending state for at least 40 days. I'll be looking to sell the rally in the downtrend. This is Sonopter, S-T-K-L. Downside to this is it's a low dollar stock. I usually like stocks that are greater than $20. So if you are going to trade that, just be aware of it. This is one of the exceptions to the rule that I mentioned earlier. I like to default to one strike out the money. I would probably have to go an in the money option because this is a low dollar stock and I've got very few choices on strike selection. Trading stock would be okay in this, this occasion. And um, just because it's a low dollar stock, it's not going to be as expensive to trade should you want to lock up some of your margin capital for trading. Just be aware of that. That's one of the, um, the things that you need to keep an eye on with a low dollar stock. I usually like to stay in the um, in excess of $20 range. It has been, and obviously it's, um, if we just zoom out, it has been higher. It's just not at the moment. So I probably need to think about it in the uh, being on my list. Uh, SWIR, again, rising channel. We've got a small consolidation here. Similar thing. It's coming back into the range above $17. We can see it trade up to $20 uh, as it flip flops in that, in this case, rising channel. Last couple of folks, and then we'll wrap up. VLO, another energy sector stock. Again, I've already got plenty of exposure to the energy sector. Uh, had a trade on here. Again, you can see buy the dip. Get, I don't get it right all the time. I applied corrective trade management, profited on the way down. Uh, it's gone sideways. I don't need a new entry. This is still active for me. But again, I've mitigated some of the, uh, the loss potential. So if this moves higher, retest the high. The, although from the option point of view, it would be a very small profitable trade. I've mitigated the loss and the risk on the way down with corrective trade management. So this should be a good profitable trade if it can rally higher. And I'll be looking to close that out. Um, shortly. So more management. Am I looking for a new trade on this? Probably not. Average prices across bearish. I'm just trying to manage this trade uh, more than anything. And um, I think it might be fair to say we are transitioning from trending into ranging. I, that's, that, that seems more obvious to me. Looking for a new trade, I'll probably leave it and wait for a little bit of more, a little bit of further information. Uh, WCC, I see this as a rising channel. We've got multiple crosses on the 50 over the 20. Um, this time it's this time it's angled. This time it's angled. So with new information since we last looked at this, it was looking like a buy the dip. Hopefully that explains my trade choice there. With new information, it looks like it's in a rising channel. I've managed to trade. I've uh, mitigated my or sorry, locked in my profits on this. And uh, looking for a new trade entry, I wouldn't be looking for a new trade right now. Uh, I'd be looking for a breakout above the rising channel high. I'm going to default to calling this a range, even though it's technically trending and ranging at the same time. So I'd just be looking for a, a breakout or a reversal at the range low because technically it's a range. I've got to trade it how I see it. And it meets one of the six money making blueprints. Similarly, and lastly, US Steel. This has been a little bit of a bitch for me, but what can we do? We only know that with hindsight. One, two, three crosses in the average price. New information means that it's now a range. We've got a little bit of conflict in direction. We're below the 200. We are at the range low. If it was to go back above the 200, say, about $23, 
uh, then I could say we've got that break back into the range. Right now, it's looking like it's attempting to break down and out. So I could consider a bearish trade on this. It's below the 200, below the range, and we can consider a range break out. Right. Well, a little bit of overtime uh, to be played in today's session, but nonetheless, it's looking uh, good. New trades for me. Do, 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 do. New trades for me. New trades for me. Where are we? New trades for me. The trades that I've placed uh, today. In fact, I've prepared some slides. I've just remembered. So new trades for me. I've posted these up in the uh, community. So new trades for me. I've had a little dabble on Ethereum. I know, folks. I know. Ethereum. Um, I've had a little dabble on Ethereum for our charts. The data don't lie. Um, it's looking good. Uh, win resources. I've got a little bit of bearish exposure. Sell the rally in a downtrend. These are trades that I've placed this week. AIG, buy the dip in an uptrend. We've got TD, Toronto Dominion, not Toronto Domination, as I said in one of our uh, closed sessions. A uh, little bit of a hybrid of trending resumption and breakout of a wedge type pattern. Uh, the pattern itself is not important. It's just to recognize. I just happen to recognize it. It was obvious in my mind. Uh, Mike, uh, sorry, Monster Beverages. We've got the range low, range reversal. CLF by the dip we looked at earlier. NVIDIA by the dip we looked at that. EXP. Um, range reversal and AMAT. I think we had a request for AMAT, but we already looked at that as well. I've had multiple trades on this. It's a reversal off the range low. Whew. Toss me a ticker. I think we've had a good run through. Thank you all for bearing with me. This has been recorded, <laughs> so you can watch it back. Uh, I'm going to process later, so if you want to watch it back later um, at a little bit of a slower pace, that would be cool and groovy. So uh, help me out, folks. What was your, uh, Randall, thank you. Zach, uh, again, thank you for comments. What was your biggest takeaway? Let me know. Give me some feedback. What landed? What what was interesting? Uh, what was your biggest takeaway? Leave a comment. Uh, if you do want to raise your hand, if you want to hop on the microphone, I can just toggle it on and you can uh, we can have a little bit of a chat. If not, that's cool. Just leave a comment. What was your biggest takeaway? What was, um, what landed? What resonated? Was there any aha moments? Just let me know where you're at. What was your biggest takeaway? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Steve, BTD. Yeah, BTD. So uh, by the dip, use the moving averages. It's Exactly, it's not just the 50. We can use the 20 and the 50 in conjunction with each other. Just to kind of layer on to your comment, Steve, if the 20 is below the 50, I'm generally going to ignore it and just use the 50 period moving average. If you're not sure, use the 50 period moving average. So Rodrigo, thank you for your comments. Uh, the recording, I'll get it processed um, in the next hour. So I've got to wait for Zoom to process it and then I've got to upload it. So give me uh, one to two hours, I'll have that done. Uh, so that'll be ready for you later. I'll make the announcement in the Slack group as usual. If you're not in the Slack group, uh, you can come and join. I'll typically make an announcement that the workshop is done. You can see all the past replays. They're on YouTube. You can get the, uh, the slides that you saw there. They're in the, uh, the chat, all the trades that I'm looking at, um, uh, free access. So again, you can go and have a little look. Uh, just go to uh, Antivesta, anti antivestor.com forward slash Slack. If I can ever learn how to type and spell at the same time. Yeah, feel free to join. There we go. So that should be in the chat box. Did that go through? There we go. So antivestor.com Slack. You might have to copy it. Let me just try that again with the HTTP thingamajig, thingamajig HTTPS. Okay, that should, that should be clickable. I don't know if it is or it isn't. You might have to copy it. Anyway, there's a link in most of the emails that I send out. So if you're getting my emails, you'll see the link there as well. We can have a, a list of the, the slides and you can look at some of the, the details like this one. You can zoom into the um, the performance reports. So this is the, uh, the algorithm that I have that validates, firstly, the strategy and the strategy on the stocks that I'm trading. So it just gives me confidence to place the trade and not think too great. So that that's uh, something for you there. Randall, obviously good. Uh, Glenn, again, the... Uh, Replay will be ready in the next hour. And again, I'll make the announcement in the uh, Slack group uh, for you. Again, I'm not seeing any questions. Uh, so 
Uh, oh, Martin. Hello, Martin. It's been a long, long time since I uh, saw your name. Uh, always good to see different patterns on the charts, how to approach uh, each one and when to leave it alone. Yeah, I think just having, if you're uncertain, I mean, you heard me say it, like, I don't know what to do with this. There's conflict in the way that we view the chart. It doesn't meet one of our requirements. Go look at something else. A big part of what we do as traders is instead of looking at how do I trade this chart, which is what most traders do. And, and we've all done it. Again, I certainly did it when I first started out. It was, now I'm looking at this chart. How do I trade it? And what we should be really asking is, now I'm looking at that chart. Where's the trade? Oh, there's no trade. Go look at something else. We want to be able to go, there's the trade instead of where's the trade. If we're asking the question, where's the trade, then we've either not got enough definition on our strategy. The pattern that we're looking for isn't there. But we should just be able to go, oh, there it is. And that stock market equivalent of where's Wally. We want to be able to go, there's Wally every time. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, and Zach agrees with Martin. Hello, Zach. Zach. Zach Martin, Martin Zach. Um, Rear Retrotina and the Theta conversation was always good. And Al, very good. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. Uh, it really does mean a lot to me that you've decided to spend some time uh, with me today. I, I fully get that we could all be doing something else with our time, with our day, with our families, with our loved ones. Um, I enjoy doing these sessions. So I'm glad that you got a lot out of it. Um, if you have got any value from today's session, all that I would ask is that you share the replay with two people who need to see it um, and just try and share uh, the wealth that we're actually trying to provide here. Um, I would also ask that you put into action uh, what you've learned today. If you've got uh, a lesson that you can learn, just go and do it. Uh, that means more to me than, than anything else. And just let me know that you've applied it and, and that you're doing it and send me a message. You can tag me in any of the groups or you can send me a private message. Uh, I'm pretty cool with that, but I just love for each and every one of you to take action on any lesson that you've learned today and just apply it into your own training routine. Simplest thing that you can do is um, apply those money making patterns. You know, is that what is the trend? Is the the simplest thing that we can do? And I certainly don't make my training any more complicated than firstly determining what the trend is. Uh, at the beginning, I did promise you that you may be invited to work with me. And uh, the thing that I've learned over the years is that the best way to learn how a portfolio is being managed is to see a portfolio, how it's being managed. And um, so I am looking for two or three students who are motivated to get results. I have a group accelerator. Uh, I don't have any place for one-on-one uh, -on -one mentorships and, uh, at the moment. Uh, but if you'd like to talk about that for future, um, I usually take uh, two to three months for doing them. So if you want to talk about them, please feel free to send me a message. You can get more details about what I do um, at antibester.com. Or if you're watching the replay, you can go to production line trading, which hopefully is a little bit more memorable because we are production line traders. Also goes to the same place, but production line trading will take you to the same place. And you can learn a little bit more about the group program. We obviously go through, believe it or not, we actually only touch the surface. I go through as much detail as I can to help you become successful traders without working with me directly. Uh, but some of you might need extra, extra uh, help, extra attention. And that's cool as well. We have a lot of processes and checklists that go into the mechanical scan. We can go into the visual confirmation in more detail. Again, there's six money-making blueprints that I use. And the trade craft is usually the thing that we don't often have time to do. Where's my entry? Where's my exit? Where's my stop? Where's my target? Where am I going to uh, take action? What am I going to do? How am I going to manage the trade if it's not working? It's the hedge fund trade management system. And that really can make the difference. It's the bit that means that if the trade doesn't work as planned, I can still make money. So the next steps is you are invited to work with me. As I mentioned, the links are in the chat box. Just go to productionlinetrading.com and you can learn a little bit more about the group accelerator program. And if you want to talk now, I'm going to stay around for another five or so minutes. Just raise your hand. We can either have a chat or I can hop on a call with you and we can turn the mic on and talk a little. Uh, and lastly, once again, thank you for taking a moment out of your day to spend it with little old me and everyone else that's here today and uh, have a great weekend. And maybe there's ice cream involved in your future. It certainly will be in mine. <laughs>
Have a great weekend, everyone. I'll see you all at the same time, same place next week. And if you do want that chat, I'll just stay around for a few more minutes and field any questions.